Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In this video here, we're going to take a look at the Tinix platform. We're actually going to create a series, a mini series of three videos where we're going to cover the whole platform that you can use as a machine learning engineer, or if you're getting into AI computer vision and just working with data sets, they have a really nice platform. You can explore your data set, which is what we're going to cover in this video here. We're going to focus on how we can act like use this in your own use cases and in real scenarios where you have a data set, you want to figure out how we can get the best data set because when we're working with AI, deep learning, machine learning models, trash in is also trash out. So in the other videos, we're going to cover like the embedding viewer. And then we're also going to focus on in the next video about error analysis, like how we can do error analysis on your data set. They have a whole section and a complete feature where you can compare different kind of like models. So when you're working as a machine learning engineer, you have a data set, you test out your data set, fine tune your data set, do some modification changes here and there. You train different kind of models and then you can use the whole Tinix platform to evaluate your data set and fine tune it to get the best model possible. So we're gonna jump straight into the Tinix platform. The first hundred users to sign up from my videos here, they will actually get three months trial for free. So you can try to explore it yourself, use it on your own data sets, your own models and so on. So first of all, we're going to have our data set. Here we have this BDD validation set with 2000 images. We're going to use that throughout these videos. They have the data explorer over here. So they have these three different tabs that we're going to take a look at. We divide them into each individual video. So let's now just jump straight into the data explorer. Here we can see like the image view. So this is the data set. We have our uh, typing for like the embedding search up here at the top where we can basically just search for whatever we have in the data set and they will sort it by that. We have the ground truths here, so we can basically sort our classes. We have the predictions. We can also sort our predictions. We can also specify the error types here. We're definitely going to take a look at those error types here. They have the data quality tech, as we're going to see in one of the upcoming videos, ranges for the confidence score in section over union. And we can also just hide and show a ground truth and also predictions from our model. So this is a really cool tool for being able to like evaluate your model, your predictions against your ground truth, trying to figure out like if you have some mislabelings um, here and there, but also if you have some optic that is not labeled correct in your data set. And that is one of like the biggest problem or the main problems when you're training machine learning and AI models. So yeah, let's just go through some examples. Let's just start with a really cool feature that they have. So they have this embedding search. So let's just search for taxes to start with, and then it actually like knows what to search for. So it's basically, basically just finding like taxes here, which is corresponding to the embeddings. Should be able to see some taxes if we just scroll down a bit further. So we see we have a taxi here, 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 here. So it is act like very accurate when we're doing these like visual text embedding searches. So let's just take this example here. Let's go in, we can see the bounding boxes. We can filter it based on the confidence score. If you don't want to take a look at like predictions with a low confidence score, in most use cases, we would like to like filter out those. We can also see if our model missed some detections here and there, we can sh hide and show them over here to the right. So we can now hide the predictions or like the ground truth, and we can also hide the predictions. So here we can basically see that we get some pretty nice detections. We're pretty much detecting everything. We can see that we actually like miss a detection here. So like the blue, blue one, so the prediction, we don't really predict this one. So one of the other cool features is that we can show the categories. So we can basically just see like what we're actually like predicting. So here we can actually see that we are detecting a pedestrian, even though it, it is not really a pedestrian. So maybe that is a wrong miss um, labeling. So let's try to see if we actually have our labels. So yeah, we can see that we're not predicting this as a pedestrian, but we can see that we act like did label it in our data set. So yeah, we can use it for this specific use case. Again, you can go in and fine tune your data set here and there and delete labelings, but also add other labels or annotations if you have missed some in your data set. We can also go up and search for, for example, like taxes um, at night. Let's try to search for that. Now we should be able to only see like uh, taxes in the night. So maybe you have some specific use cases here and there that you want to search for. If you have your model failing in some specific scenarios, it could also be like pedestrians. Okay, so let's now take a very important scenario when we are working with these like um, street data sets. So it could be for autonomous cars or whatever you want to predict when you're driving around. So let's go inside predicted. Let's go with pedestrians. We can go inside the error types and we want to filter it based on false positives where we act like predicting pedestrians uh, that weren't pedestrians in our data set. So this could actually like be a really important example because we want to avoid pedestrians, but here we are 
pretty much predicting pedestrian with a high confidence score where it is not it looks more like a fire hydrant so here this is act like this is act like a pretty good example so right now we have a crosswalk we're driving with our car over the crosswalk and we're detecting a pedestrian like right beside the crosswalk on the sidewalk so here we see that this is basically just some kind of like pole or maybe like a traffic light but we're detecting this as a pedestrian with really high confidence score so this just shows what the platform is capable of when we're just like doing a couple of clicks so right now we're filtering our data set based on pedestrians and false positives we can also do like this on an image base but we can also go in and do it on optics base where we basically just take a look at the bounding boxes so specific bounding boxes compared to all of those images here so right now we can see some specific use cases again we can see the example with the fire hydrant uh, we're detecting a person here even though it's not like perfectly on top of the person sometimes it has a hard time actually like predicting that is a person the bounding boxes are not really good we can see the exact same example with our crosswalk so we can see that our model has some problems with people like and pedestrians being further away and also when they are blurred out. Again, we have a, a sign right beside the walk where we're actually predicting this as a pedestrian. So this objects view here is also very, very good to be able to take a look at your data set and find specific um, edge cases. Okay, so another cool thing that I want to show you is that if we go into the error times, we also have this mispredicted. So we basically have our label data set and then we're doing predictions of those images. Now we can go in and see all the mis predicted labels and classes in our data set so maybe we can find some edge cases here and there so let's go through it let's just do it here on an optic based label so i really like this view with the optics i prefer this view over the image uh, image one because it is way easier to spot these edge cases we also get the confidence score and the intersection over union directly and then we can filter our images based on that so here we can see that we have a motorcycle so we're predicting a motorcycle even though it is labeled as a pedestrian the exact same uh, example here so we have a pedestrian in our data set but now we're detecting it as a car really cool like these things are very very crucial when we're talking about like optic detection especially like for autonomous cars it could also be like in production lines and all those different things where it is really really important that we have the correct predictions for our model and if we go back to the start trash in is also trash out so the model side is not really like too important. It is more the data side. So there's a lot of good optic takers out there as we're also going to see when we're going to take a look at the model comparison. So the most important thing is to get a perfect data set. Okay, so if we have found an edge case, we can also go in and find similar images. So basically we can hit this select button and we can either choose like the image or object. Then we can basically just go down and choose all the, all the images that we want. So here we have some images that are far away. So let's just try to take that. Uh, we also have some examples here. Um, let's just scroll down and take a couple more. So let's take that one. Then we can also go up after we've selected images and find similar images. It's basically going to use the embeddings and so on to basically group the images. So we get similar images. So yeah, we can see that we get the road, we get optics like farther away and so on. So if you find some specific edge cases or like loopholes in your data set, your labels or in your predictions, you can basically go in and find similar situations or similar images in your data set. Either if you want to delete the images, if you want to tag them, for mislabeling, mispredictions and so on. And also if you want to change the labeling um, or like the way that you're labeling your images to some specific things. So this is also one of the cool features with this 10X platform. So that's it for this video here, guys. We've covered like the data explorer in the 10X platform. So thank you guys for watching this video here. I'm really excited for the next video to show you guys the embedding viewer where we can actually like, see and group embeddings and all the images we can even see the image views with the embeddings and also the clusters so i'm really excited for that video stay tuned i'll see you in that video guys bye for now